All right, we are back with the gorgeous lady Renee Michelle, and she was just telling me about a special Thanksgiving dish that she makes for the wrestlers. They all look forward to making it. My mouth is watering. Uh, tell tell us a little about that, Renee. Oh, so I make a garlic garlic lemon parsley turkey with um, bacon on top. So I get like the honey crispy type of bacon. So you know, a lot of people they struggle with having their turkey dry on the breast, but if you keep the, if you pop it in for a little bit, then take it back out, and then you put the bacon strips on top of the turkey, it keeps the turkey moist. So all those juices and all the butter that's like seeping in between the skin and the breast of the turkey, as well as like I put like the onions and lemons and stuff it all in, in there with the turkey and put like, you know, tomatoes and stuff to make the gravy. And as well as either it could be like cornstarch or yeah, I do the cornstarch to make the gravy for the turkey. And then if you make, like, the garlic mashed potatoes oh my with God. the butter and then, like, mix it all up together with the five-layer baked mac and cheese, the bacon wrap Brussels sprouts, or, oh. like, the bacon wrap, like, little mini sausages with brown sugar. And then, um, gosh, there's a lot. There's a lot of things that I make. I also, like, Yorkshire pudding. Love and it. then as well, like, you know, pot roast. I've got to tell you, Renee, and I think I speak for every man listening, your husband is the luckiest man on planet Earth. Yeah, he is. My he, God. Yeah, he should be lucky. <laughs> yes. Hopefully he, hopefully he knows. He appreciates. And you can see from my headband that we're welcoming another special guest. He's been on the show before, on the TBT show. You saw him on with uh, John Elites and Mike Dowd as well as with uh, my lovely co-host, Britt Garcia from one of the earlier episodes. And uh, this man is has become uh, the official wine sommelier here at the Berlin, Berman Law Group. Uh, he comes to us straight from Italy. And once again, Massimo Battista. Great to see you, Massimo. Nice to see you. How are you? Hey, you guys Massimo. look fantastic. Thank Hi, you. Massimo. Nice Massimo. to meet you. Now, I'll tell you, we, we, we told Massimo uh, that we had this gorgeous woman coming and we couldn't keep this uh, couldn't keep this man away, and he, brought, <laughs> and he brought his wines, some delicious wines for us to try. So I'm gonna kind of turn it over to Massimo and Renee, uh, so that we can we can uh, all try these wines, and Massimo can explain them. That's good. Together forever. So yeah, the, the, together forever. <laughs> is, that, is that how it is? The name, <laughs> the name of the company is the Real Chooch Wine. Yeah. So all my wine comes from Italy. Of course, I'm from Italy. Yes. And I pick the best wine. Why? Because it's like all family vineyards. Yeah. That they've been in business for a long time. And my grandfather owns one of the vineyards. Oh, nice. So it's going to be like uh, something unique today. We're going to try the sparkling Pinot Grigio. Sparkling Pinot Grigio. It's, it's like a gin in the bottle. I like that. And I love the fact that you have like the woman figure here. Like very curvaceous. Let me see. I had an idea. It kind of looks like a genie coming out. <laughs> How amazing would it be if there were a wine with this absolutely amazing, perfect figure of a woman, uh, the mistress, oh, Lady Renee I wine? Like I think that. that would be fabulous. A wine bottle with a, my figure? A bottle with that perfect figure. I'm telling you, is it yes. amazing? The possible. <laughs> is it? I mean, the possibility is endless. Yes. Yes. So this is sparkling Pinot Grigio. Yeah. Why it's unique? First thing because I picked it. And the other thing it goes with all kind of food. For Ooh. example, ladies first. Gracias. It goes with the spicy calamari. Yeah. It goes with all kind of. It goes with pizza. It goes with the pasta. It goes with all bunch of Italian food. They even a lot of spicy like Mexican food. Oh, this I love spicy food. This is very like seductive. It really like makes it low with your mouth when you drink it. Yes, oh, I like that. Yes. Salute. 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 For the real Chu Chuen company. Yes. Oh, that's fabulous. Fabulous. I like it. You see it's so uh, you don't get the alcohol. Yeah. It's strong. It's very smooth. And there, yeah, it's smooth and it has like a little bit of a kick at the end with it. So, uh, Renee, what are some of your favorite uh, styles of wine to drink? I would say, I mean, it really depends on the mood. I would say I'm definitely a red blend type of girl. Um, the red blend that I absolutely love is called Dark Cloud. So there's, um, you can find it at um, Total Wines or whatever. 
but that's also the wine that I actually had at the wedding too because I'm really picky like I want something like not too bitter but I also want something sweet so the red blend pretty much works for me you know I am open up to like trying different things you know but the red blend black cloud is my favorite so far I think just to switch it up with the and go with the Venice for the wedding would be perfect. Yes. So you feel like you're in Venice. Yes, I love it, and I love like the. And this is a prosecco. Yeah, I, I do. Love I prosecco. do love prosecco. I do love. I, I like all types of things. Like if I taste it and I like it, I'll tell you I like it. If I don't, I'm like, eh, you know. So the great news: we're gonna do the wedding for you. Oh, another you're gonna, wedding! You're, you're gonna, gonna, you're gonna, gonna, you're gonna order. Gonna, you're gonna order my wine. Are you proposing, yeah. Massimo? Are you proposing to me? <laughs> like, is this how it works? Is couldn't this how we're doing it? For that. Like, can I have more than one wedding? You never know. In many cultures, you can have many husbands, you know? Mm. I'm not complaining. Yeah. Yeah. Look, look, men, some men, they can have many wives. Why can't I have many husbands? I think you should. It's woman as amazing as you. Yeah, I agree one with husband you is not enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They'll, they'll never starve, I can tell you that much. Oh, nice. I'll tell you, this lucky man, lucky man, and we're lucky men to be here with you, and we're lucky to be here with Massimo. These wines are absolutely fabulous. Now, tell her about the name here on this wine glass, the real chooch. She may not be familiar with the term. Well, the real chooch is the, uh, the wine company, but it means uh, something that American Italians they use yeah. uh, still now, especially in uh, movies like uh, Sopranos, you yeah. know, the... The, the Godfather, face. like these yeah. movies, there was this expression, capiche, mm -hmm. you know, forget about one of the wine is forget about it too. Yeah. But uh, of course, uh, the chooch is like, you know, when you're like, you know, when you're little and uh, you, you, your, your grandfather asks you to grab a, a glass and you drop it, he goes like, hey, what are you, a chooch? Yeah. That's what. <laughs> so it's so interesting like because. Cuts. Like, what are you, a cut? Exactly. <laughs> like you know, in a good way, you know, in yeah. a funny way. Like we, you're drunk. <laughs> We talked about the, the term coming from the different mob movies, and the last time I was enjoying these glasses of wine with Massimo, we were alongside the most corrupt cop in American history, Mike Dowd, and one of the most notorious hitmen from the uh, Gambino crime family, John Ooh. Elite. So we have all kind of interesting guests in here. Honestly, uh, I heard about Massimo. the Gambinos. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, jo so John Elite couldn't be with us today. Uh, but to, he's a partner of ours. He does his podcasts here as well at the Berman Law Group. And I just want to kind of tell people 10x law, and uh, you'll see it, the number on the screen. Anywhere in the country, if you've been involved in an accident, reach out to us, 10x law. On a serious note, we have the very best crack legal team here at the Berman Law Group and affiliates all around the country in all 50 states. That's fantastic. Wow. The best low group in the world. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. They're on top of the game. And let me tell you something. They know what they're doing. And they're like very straight, direct. Yeah. Absolutely. I never saw a lawyer like this in uh, in Florida, especially. It's hard to find good lawyers. Exactly. In Florida? Very lucky. Oh, why yeah. is that? I don't know. Why is that? What a lot think? of, the, you know, you're going to find that there are a lot of these firms that they're not dedicated to you, to the client. They go in so many different directions. And Berman Law Group, we're just, we're dedicated to, to the individual. And we give you that, uh, we give you that custom uh, concern and, and it's legitimate. And 10X Law is really the best, the best nationwide. You know, and uh, I wanna just say that I would, would hope that this gorgeous woman would never be in an accident, but if she was, I would hope that she would uh, reach out to us. Oh, God. I mean, yeah, definitely for sure, especially like with the way of the world going in today. That's right. A lot of crazy people out there on yeah. the roads. I'm, I'm not trying to get Amber Heard out here. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did you follow that? Amber Heard, oh, uh, Johnny Depp? It was beautiful. <laughs> Finally, like uh, they said, the first man that wins against a woman. Yes, the man, yes. That's a beautiful thing. But you could tell by looking at her, she got crazy in the eyes. Yeah. Yeah, she's, uh, you know, I've and I've said it before, and, and I don't say this proudly, but I have been with women in the past that make Amber Heard look like June Cleaver. <laughs> uh, my taste in uh, my taste in women wow. throughout the years was not always the best. Like, mm -hmm. 
where do you find them? Let me fix them a little bit. By the way, you're like 100% Italian today. Look at you. Yeah, look well, I'll at you. I'll tell you. You know, I am I am Italiano blooded, but I'm but I I do have that little quarter Irish in me, that 25% Irish. But like I say, you know, people will say to me, "You don't look Irish," but I always say, "But you should see my temper." You know. Just a yes. touch. Just yes. a touch. back here all right he's so making it rain back here <laughs> yeah what did you get this jacket they look fantastic I thank like you always. thank you yeah, this you is like actually it? made in italy yeah this jacket uh, i picked it out and yes you she did picked that yes. out. she did pick that out for me that's true yeah i i um i had her pick that out for me and we knew she's coming on the show and uh she she told me to go with this one and i and i and i i said yeah although I don't know if it is as nice as the jackets that this man has. He's you, you in addition to being a, a wine sommelier, you also uh, have a great clothing line yourself, Massimo. Custom suits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Batista clothing. When you need a nice custom suits, call Massimo. Yeah. You make people happy and look like I a movie love stars. A, I love a man in a nice, well tailored suit. <laughs> You know, it like shows his figure very well. Oh yeah, especially yeah. when you're like perfect body like mine. Yeah, in great shape. You know? Yeah, I, I can't resist. I can dance that. for you here. Do a little dance for you. Yeah, that, that that's that's beautiful. <laughs> what did you learn that? You know, I don't know. That's a, that's a trick I've always. Were you done born like years. that? You know, I can dance oh, like for you without dancing. moving my feet. It's you know? just, wow. just dancing. Yeah. Nobody can do, do you that. feel like dancing? I can even go to the <laughs> beat. <laughs> yeah, well, let's get back to the wines here, Massimo. Tell us again, what are we drinking here? Right here is a beautiful sparkling Pinot Grigio. We are yes. the only one in USA that we have a sparkling Pinot Grigio, guys. Ooh. You understand? This is something like unique. It's a doctor. Yeah. Like I told you, mix a love in your mouth. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. It goes with that kind of food. Spicy food, the calamari, pasta, pizza, yeah. chicken, parmigiano. Parmigiano. Oh, yeah. You know that I know Absolutely. That you know that we know. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, and, and I, I'll tell you, I, I love spicy food. And... Uh, I was telling Renee earlier we, we were we were snacking on something some spicy food and I said I love I love spicy food and and I could just imagine how well this goes with it. Listen, believe it or not, it's like perfect for that because it's not too like it's not too sweet. It's perfect, like mm -hmm. you know, it's like a, exactly the the way it's supposed to be the Pinot Grigio but with a touch of sparkling. Yeah, fantastic. It's fantastic. Mean, fantastic. Like, a touch of sparkling. Fantastic. Yeah, that I think that's where that kick is coming from mm -hmm. at the end. That's yeah. why it's a gene in the bottle. It's not overly carbonated at all. It's it's like you say, it's very subtle. Very subtle. Yeah, it definitely will go great with the calamari, especially if you have the calamari, not only with like the salsa, the cocktail sauce, but mm -hmm. you know like some calamari that like serve with like the sweet the sweet and sour like salsa. Oh, oh yeah, I like yeah. that. And you know what I like when I make calamari? The sweet chili sauce, There, that's what it's called, sweet chili sauce. I make calamari, I like to have some melted gorgonzola. Cheese mm. on my calamari. Oh, yeah, Americano. This is Americano. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> In Italy, we don't. I don't know. Well, I, you know, you I'm got, a chef, but I experiment. Sweet chili sauce. And, and you I know, don't I want to tell you this. I want to tell you this because I always fuse different foods together. Yeah. And and Massimo might might say that you know this. Oh, it's, it's blasphemy. Blasphemy. <laughs> but like I make a I make a pasta salad. With uh, and it's like a Mexican fusion. It has guacamole. I make an avocado oil dressing, and uh, and cold shrimp, and uh, nice beef steak tomatoes with the, with my spiral pasta. So I do. Oh, oh I always blend. Now I'm a fusion. I'm an americano. I'm an americano. You know. Yeah. <laughs> americano. Yeah. Yeah. Right, that's his own dish. So that's let me good. ask you a question. With your pasta, do you break your pasta to put it in the in the in the pot, or you just let it be? I just I just let it be. I put a little touch of salt in the pot and no. just and I just let it be. No, I think no. Well, she's, you're talking about maybe when you do the like, yeah, the spaghetti. Like, I see oh, like yeah, people like yeah, they yeah, break yeah, it, break and it. then I'm I'm standing yeah, there and I'm sitting there, there. Yeah, yeah. and I'm nice sitting there and I'm, look, and I'm looking <laughs> and I'm like, what are you doing? I don't this break it. No, no, I don't break it. No, I don't break it. No. <laughs> you don't break the pasta? Okay, good. No. Do you good. like to break the pasta? No. 
You don't break the pasta. Listen, we, you can break the pasta together. Sometimes yeah. we can break it. No. But it tastes better with the touch. No. You know, with your touch. You got to let it like boil and seep in all together. Right, and then after that, you know, you have the olive, olive oil and the water, and then it boils it all together and keep it nice and soft and everything. Then after that, you rinse it out. You put some more of the olive oil. You put the, like the um, you know, like the seasoning, like uh, the parsley, and then a little bit of butter, and then you put like the, let it like <laughs> you know, so a, the noodles don't stick together. I have a surprise <laughs> to announce to to everyone. Uh, it's coming to Canada's Top Combat Sports Podcast, the Hannibal TV. I do have a cooking show episode. Coming up with a gorgeous lady, Renee Michelle. What are you? Uh, we have an exciting cooking yeah. cooking show coming up. Yes. Can I cook too? Some buzz? Yeah, yeah you can absolutely. Cook with you. We'll, cook, be we'll cook together. Absolutely. Together forever. We, yes. I love it. Oh, wait. Oh, yes. <laughs> we can make yeah. some cherry tomato pasta with beans. Yes. Oh, I love cherry tomato. Simple. Yes. Yeah, Simple. I do like that. And then I yeah. also love to have the spicy Italian sausage with the ground sausage. beef. Yeah. We love yeah. sausage. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. And the spicy Italian Definitely. sausage with the ground beef and mix it together. Oh, yeah, that sounds good. Let me tell you, in Florida, we have a good sausage. Oh, yeah? Is uh, the, our friend, uh, the boys market, they sell the best sausage. Yeah. Really? That's I'm Joe, on. right? That's Joe. Yeah. 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 yeah, our friend he Joe. He sells a, a good, guy. good, like, uh, it's like, better, believe it or not, it's better than Italy. Because really? they put less fat inside and it tastes so good, it's like, listen, they do a good job. I, I was like, shit. Look, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all about it. Sausage. I'm, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good okay. for food. I'm good for a good sausage. Yeah. <laughs> I mean,. <laughs> You know what I'm trying to say. Well, that's, uh, you know I'm getting a little uh, excited here. Here and there. Uh, <laughs> I think I need you know a cold shower. She wants a good sausage. Yeah, I want a good sausage. You need a cold mean? shower. Right? Like, you I have it. Need a cold shower over here. I don't want a plain one. I don't want a no flavorless one. I want one with flavor. Okay. With the flavor. Yeah. You want a real yeah. sausage yes. with the flavor Italian. Absolutely. Yeah. I got you. A good God, Italian thank sausage. You. We gotta get it from the boys market. The yeah, best sausage. The best sausage. Yeah. All right. <laughs> when you try that one, you're gonna be like, seriously, nobody makes like that in USA. Yeah. I've been here for like ten years. Yeah. In Florida. Like, I'll never convert. <laughs> no. <laughs> when you go Italian sausage, you cannot go back. Yes. Oh, okay. So there you go. Right. Yes. Oh, uh, uh, everybody's in trouble. No doubt. Do you like spice or like just mild? Like what do you like? It depends on the taste, but I'll go for the spicy. Uh, I need a little kick. They got both spicy. Yeah. And, uh, well, listen, the spicy a little bit aphrodisiac, too, sometimes. Yes, you be it, is, it is. But look, I can he handle... He a lot of spicy when he cooks, look, right? I'm a, a spab so I'm, I'm a spicy. I'm a spicy type of girl, but if I need to go mild, I'll go mild, too. So, it, And if I need to go sweet or sour, I'll do that, too. Uh, you're flexible. Yes. I'm adaptable. What do you think about that? She's flexible. She's gorgeous. She can cook. She loves sausage. Perfect <laughs> woman. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good combination. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't think they make women like you anymore. Yeah, no, well, are you a limited edition? Yeah, I'm, I'm One a of a kind. I'm a unicorn. Yes. Yeah, you're I'm a unicorn. unicorn. Ah, I knew it. You are a unicorn. I'm a unicorn. You're like hard, hard to catch. You know, a rarity and hard yeah. to catch. You don't have any sister for me. No, no. no. Ah. Can we clone you? Is there any scientists yeah. we can clone you? <laughs> good luck <laughs> if they can catch me. <laughs> Well, in case, you know, any friend that looks like you, that she's flexible like you, and she likes spicy sausage. Her, her name is Mandy Leone, right? Oh, uh, um... Could set him up with, right? That's no, name. actually, I have a good one. Oh. Do you, do you like Persians? Oh, I love Persians. Do you oh, like Persians yeah. that are very yeah. curvy? Oh. oh, I do. That's oh, yeah? Me. I was a Persian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay, okay. yeah but she's not, she's not in wrestling. She's not no, in she's wrestling. No, she's not. No. But she's curvy. Yes, very, cur very, very curvy. All right, age? What's, what's the age? Um, She's probably around my age, a single mother. Oh. But, you know, she, she definitely have her education and got her life together and stuff. Here, here. Actually, as a matter of fact, maybe I could pull her profile. While maybe. you're doing that, so Renee, you guys could... while you're doing that, Renee, I want to <laughs> let your friend know that I was uh, Hussein Hassan Vasiri, the illegitimate son of the Iron Sheik for years in pro wrestling, and I can speak some Farsi. Uh, I managed Prince of Persia Kamal Shalarus throughout you. his oh. his UFC career, and I and a lot of fans still think that I am a Persian, but I, uh, well, I am I am not. <laughs> Although You're I did not? used to have the big mustache curled up, and and uh, and I actually have my robe. We'll be we can cut a promo together in my robe. My oh, gold, I would love that. My I gold do. chic robe. I have it in the car. My beautiful can you robe. Please wear that thing next yeah, time. Yeah, I'm gonna, no, I'm gonna wear it today. Today? Uh, yeah, I couldn't carry oh everything in God. here. So it. my girlfriend. <laughs> funny fact about my girlfriend. She was oh. on the doctor in nine hundred two one zero. You know, like the 
you know, the two doctors. Beverly Hills? That, yeah. 90210? Yeah. No, no, no. It's like the breast exam, you know, people that does like the plastic surgery and oh, stuff like okay. that. Oh, okay. She was on that season. I was supposed to be there physically with her, but obviously I can't because wrestling. But she was on that show. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, she's a good girl. I thought you meant Beverly Hills 90210. Oh, no, no, no. Not the soap opera. Question. When did you start the wrestling? Like, it was a long time ago? Um, so my debut was March 29, 2013, when I went to my first wrestling show. It was September 1st, 2012. So I was training for three months, and then I was thrown into the wolves. And, <laughs> you know, the rest is history from She's there. She's amazing. You've got to see her in the ring. Amazing. Oh, you know, God, I'm, I'm shit. I'm the, the shit. <laughs> I was, you know, I was a great wrestler in my day, but I, I have to bow down to the youngsters, and I've got to say, this lady, Renee Michelle, she gives 100% full endorsement of the king. She oh. gives my full so endorsement. You're She's strong, amazing. Right? I'm an old soul. I know, but you're a strong woman, like, to do wrestling, you know, you can pick somebody up and just like... Only when I it. have to. Oh. <laughs> but I Love prefer that. not to get my, I prefer not to get my nails broken. <laughs> ah, here she is. Oh, my... Oh, thank you so much. That's a nice gift. Oh my, yes. She's a. I can see the Persian. The yes. Persian is. Thank you yes. for this gift. When can we invite her for some? Wine she lives in Las sauce? Vegas. I gotta get her down here. And she's not involved in the wrestling. No, not at all. Uh, okay. Not well, at all. you know, you can tell her in all seriousness that, uh, you know, I was a Persian for years in pro wrestling, and I did. Uh, one of my best friends that I managed throughout his UFC career is one of the most famous uh, Persian Iranian athletes in in the world, the Prince of Persia, Kamal Shalarus from UFC. Oh, uh, yeah, he and I are, are been best friends for for many years. So she'll certainly uh, know of us, and everybody knows the Iron Sheik. Iron Sheik was my manager in Atlanta, but he kind of went off and for some party favors and disappeared oh. into the streets. He was a, he was a he's a crazy Irish guy. Sheik. Oh, he's a you he's know? a he's character. He's kind of a character. Yeah. He is a character. He is definitely <laughs> a character. Was he with um? Yeah. Yeah. Who was he with? Uh, he was with like um, a lovely lady. Iron Sheik's wife. Yeah. Um, yeah, she he had a, a lovely wife. What did you? Was he like a genie or something this like that? Right here? This is a Florida MMA Hall of Fame ring. I got 2017 in Tampa. Nice. At RFC. I was awarded this ring. This real deal, let me tell you. Look, he got a snazzy watch, too. Yeah. Look at him. Oh, yeah. And the gold. And the, the gold. And, and the, gold uh, the most chain. of all, he's the, the, the Italian. This is it right here. This is the, this the shade, is the, the Italian. This is the capper right here. And the know. jacket today is like. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, this is my I, birthday I show, so I appreciate it. Yeah, she does. She's yeah. she picked you know what she I picked this like? out for me. Weirdly but strangely, men in corsets. So back in the day, you know how like guys that have like the vest and everything, but in the back of it, they used to be corsets for men. So they used to tie the corsets in the back. Oh, yeah, that, and it gives the illusion of the men like shape and structure. Oh wow. So you can but see then, my six pack of my yeah, body comes But then it's like you, it's like it. cut like a vest. I love which it. Yeah. is like a dying art with never seen itself. that before. I don't you know, know. I know a corset, but I've never seen a. Uh, I know okay, what you're so, talking about. But yeah, yeah that's but like cool, back in the day, like a lot of corsets wasn't just for women. Like for me, like I wear a corset. Mm -hmm. You know, I I like you know a lot of like you know 1950s Hollywood glam. Like that's my oh, look. I that's, love it. Yeah. I absolutely love it. But for men, like back in like the Renaissance era or whatever, they used to wear corsets, but it's like a vest corset, and it's really really. I love it. I love that looking. idea. You know, I have two ideas for you. Uh, Gorgeous Renee, I think oh. for photo shoots, I think one is absolutely we talked about it when we were at your the bar you have at your house. Oh. That that Raquel Welsh photo shoot where she's oh, yeah. out the oh where she yeah, the famous one where she's I'll do uh, it. She, I'll yeah, do oh it. yeah, like the junk that would look amazing. And another one of as I look at you now, you have to do the Jessica Rabbit. Oh Photoshop. really? Oh my God! Yeah, you I, are the you are Jessica Rabbit. Well, yeah, I guess yes. some people call me the Jessica Rabbit of wrestling as well. Yes, yes, that's cool. I'm all for it. I, I'll do it. I'll do it. I know one thing I love about Renee is it, it, when you give her ideas, she she very often she says I'm all for it. I love that she's game for all the different concepts and ideas. She's open oh, mind. Yeah. Open mind. Yes. Yeah. See, see, this is what I'm talking about. Corset for men. Ah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, yeah see, yeah. in oh, the back. Oh, I see what you're talking about. 
But in that's the front, like it looks like a vest, but in the back, it's like a corset. Because that, that's ah, something you talk like, about, like those ones, really, you know, go to the, the one I'm talking about is just literally. Yeah, like, but that's what, they also do it for uh, men as well. You See? know what that's if like, you look really when close? you go to the gym, you, the Velcro belt. Yeah, it's no that. different. Yeah, because it's, no it's different. better that's when you cool. lift yeah. and, you know, it strips you in. Yeah. We should do like something. That's what it's like. I'm going to make one for you, Make Man, one like that. One. Yeah, yeah but it's really your, good. Your body's gonna look like you know, like But like it, in the I front, like in the like front, yeah, it looks. Like, give it go, give it go. That's it. <laughs> yeah, but in the front, it look, it's like a vest. But in the back, it's like a corset. But that's like not, back in the day, not, that's a good idea. Back in the day, men used to wear that, and it's like a dying art. So what it basically, it's it when you're wearing like say you're wearing a suit jacket like this, it would yeah. go under the suit jacket. Under the suit, it's the vest. It's not so much. To show the vest, it's it's the it's it, the cinching in, the cinch but also yeah, it's yeah, also yeah. to show that as well. Yeah. But then, like women, they absolutely for me, for me, I can't speak mm -hmm. for all women, but for me, it actually shows the figure of the men, just like how women, you know, when guys, when women wear corsets and stuff, it shows off the figure of yeah. the woman. Same thing with women; they actually love the figure of a man. It's go both it's ways. The same. It's the same thing as, like I said, when you go to work out and I'm old school with the belt with the weight yeah. belt I wear the the velcro one mm -hmm. the straps you yeah. on it's the same essentially the same thing yeah it's basically yeah. the same thing but if you honestly think that women are not watching they're watching yeah well I hope you're watching obviously <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna make it one for myself too mm-hmm can't wait. Yeah. Well, but it looks really nice, right? No, it listen, like really believe it or not, it makes, really nice. but believe it makes you, you like, and your body looks like, mm, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like, we like, mm. <laughs> yeah. You, you and I both get it. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. You get it. So this is a Prosecco now, right? The next one is going to be Venice Prosecco. 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 Yes. D-O-C-G. Don't forget about that. Tell us what that means. Explain that to us. The origine controllata. Geografica. From the region that we make only Prosecco. Mm -hmm. That's why it's the OCG. That's the only region they make Prosecco only. That's it. That's why it's called the OCG. So essentially, a Prosecco, for people that don't know wine, is, is likened to uh, a champagne or sparkling wine. Right, it's a very si similar style, bravissimo. right? And and you have in, in the champagne world, you have the word brut that's used, B-R-U-T, for a drier yes. champagne. So essentially set similar to a Prosecco. And f just to explain, the DOCG is the region where that Prosecco emanates. When you're involved in an accident, it can shatter your entire life. Suddenly, you have physical injuries, lost wages, medical bills, and you are stressed. Don't have to do this on your own. Don't leave your life in pieces. Call the Berman Law Group and we'll help you put the pieces of your life back together. We aggressively represent clients who have been injured, but if there's no recovery, you don't owe us any fees or costs. We have recovered our clients over a quarter billion dollars, and we want to get you the money you deserve. That's, yeah, that's what they really yeah. need. Uh, but that's, this one is a good to a because it's not too sweet. Yes. yes. You know, the Prosecco is not supposed to be super sweet. No. Yes. The real deal is supposed to be the middle, you know, yes. just a touch. So what would you, what would you say, what type of food would we go with go the Prosecco? Well with the Prosecco brood, you can believe it or not, you can do Mexican food. Yes. Mexican food, guacamole, tacos. Yeah. You know what I would have with it? Oysters raw in the half shell. But that's Cold that's oysters. that's man, that's mandatory. That goes without. Of course. Oh, because because yeah. they're giving like other options too. Oh, yeah, but yeah. yeah. With yeah. oysters, this is amazing too. But yeah. it's like believe it or not, it goes with the Mexican yeah. food, spicy, with a little touch. You know, and and I. Uh, for years, uh, I ran a distributor in South Carolina, a wine distributor, and uh, we imported a uh, pomegranate wine uh, from Armenia, and uh, Riva pomegranate. And we used to do the Pama Seco, or we, Pama Seco. particularly around the holidays, we do Pama Seco. We would have a young lady nowhere near as gorgeous as, as Renee, but we had the young ladies that did the promotions <laughs> with me, and we would and we would <laughs> sample these around the holidays because it was red and it was it was fabulous for the Christmas time. Yeah. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a charmer. Listen, I'm, I'm telling you, I never met anybody. He's unique. He's yeah. unique. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No. Between you are a limited edition, but this is limited edition too. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, you I, I'm, I'm a once in a lifetime. You are absolutely one of a kind. One of a kind.
Yes. Salute, salute, salute. Oh, the real chooch. Yeah, so let's cool. pop open this Prosecco. Mm-hmm. You want to uh, touch your Prosecco now? You want to oh, feel yeah, it? Oh, yeah, we want to try that Prosecco. We're talking it's about it. We want to yes. hit the palates. That's it. Yes. So back to the, the whole, palettes. back to this whole Johnny Depp, uh, Amber Heard type situation. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> I just want to say, you know, I always thought Johnny Depp is a great actor because he has range, like I a Billy Bob Thornton. I yeah. absolutely love the man. Like, yeah. I, I'm not going to lie. I have a crush on Don Johnny Depp. Do I look like a Johnny Depp a little bit? A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Like, you know. You are Johnny Depp. Yeah. yeah. Oh! He's just, he's put, hey, that's what I mean. Johnny Depp's a great actor. This is yeah. Johnny Depp. He cut his hair. Right? He's putting on this accent. Yeah, he's, he's, he's an Italian <laughs> version of Johnny <laughs> yeah. Depp. Yeah, Italian when version of Johnny Depp. Yeah. So, like, yeah. I would say, like, my first, like, for actors, my first crush was Leonardo DiCaprio. You know, from Romeo and Juliet, and Johnny Depp from Edward Scissorhands. Edward Scissorhands. Yeah. So not from the Titanic. No. Romeo and Juliet. Ro I don't think I ever saw that one. I you know. gotta watch it. Okay. I yeah. know the story of Romeo and Juliet, but I didn't never think I saw the movie. Yeah, when he played, um, you know, in the movie Romeo and Juliet, and then just. Like, I like the old school words of talking, like the intellect, the words that actually have a meaning, you know. Titanic, you know, it was nice him being there, but Titanic's a little bit too long for me. You like, like linguists, like men that say things like, I am the pernicious purveyor of preposterous pomposity and the paragon yes. of pugilistic punditry, and I, I am here to manipulate the I, minuscule I like minded mystery. I like intellectual yes. men, you know. Yes. I like men that, that are able to say things behind it, yes. not the whole like slang terminology or like, no. And I like, think, and I think that that like is is being as an author myself, and I'm a plug. I wrote the definitive history book on uh, MMA, grappling, pro wrestling. The, mm -hmm. the the book, the renowned book, Rough and Tumble, which uh, which is renowned throughout the world of amateur wrestling, MMA, pro wrestling, and I consider myself to be an intellectual, uh, to be. An, a, sometimes I feel like. I have to dumb that down in today's society no, you because you were dealing with so many people who are who are so brutish. I'm not saying no, you, you shouldn't. Right. You shouldn't dumb that down at all. Like as a matter of fact, like I guess like my taste buds for men is like it, it varies. Like you know, like from Edward Scissorhands to you know Romeo and Juliet to like even like the rock and roller guys. You know, like I like rock and roll. Like I like HCDC. You know from. Queen, Freddie Mercury, like. Who's your? What's your favorite band? Rock band. Oh gosh, there's many. There will be. Who's your favorite front man? That's an even better one. Okay. The so sexiest rock, front man out there. Sexiest front man. Oh. <laughs> um. Uh. Well, as far as music, I love listening to Ozzy. Yeah. You know, I like listening to the Beatles. I like listening to. Um, ACDC, I like listening to Fozzy, you know, Chris, you know, shout out to him, you know, he... I've never really heard much, I know Chris Jericho is obviously, but I've yeah, never really Oz, heard the, the Fozzy, band. Fozzy. Yeah, he, I, he I, I know he has a band, I've never heard them though. Yeah, it's actually, his music's pretty good, like some of his music is actually yeah. pretty good. Um, that man is a renaissance man, I give him his full props on that, you know, mm -hmm. for not only that he's able to balance, not only like from his acting to career to like being on a network with foodies and ridiculousness to having um, a web series, you know, but I'm Chris Jericho to also on top of that, you know, running a rock band named Fozzie is like that man is all over the And place. they actually go out and, and tour. Yeah. They don't just put out some songs. I mean, he's this isn't a gimmick. It's not like, you know, I was always a, a good friend of mine actually from years ago in the wrestling business as as known as uh PS Michael PS Hayes yes. and, and a great guy, a lot of fun to be around, but he, you know, he that was more of a gimmick for him. He never went out and really toured. Uh, when they put out Bad Street USA. For people that don't know, Chris Jericho actually goes out and tours with this band, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Yeah. Like, that, like, he is nonstop. I don't know how he does it. You know, I, I would love to learn as much as I possibly can because, like, that man is always reinventing himself, and he makes money. 
and it's like yeah. a lot of people whoever have the fortitude or the or the fortunate you know to be able to do do business with him and learn from him they can learn a lot from well him. do you like to sing only only karaoke nights when i have a lot what, of drinks. would you would you uh karaoke I, no no I don't, i'm not singing I just sing one song part. i think you can no, do it no, one song i mean me, the only time you catch me singing is right over in japan well, let me get to this let me get to this point here because i oh, perform God. you get the microphone I, ready uh, no i perform here in Florida, and see, uh, in the Cocoa Beach area with Carlos Carr, who's a renowned crooner. Uh, we do Dean Martin, we do Tony Bennett, we do Frank Sinatra. Uh, we, we do some of the supper clubs throughout the Cocoa uh, Beach area. And Bally Bar, Wine Bar, I've performed with him. Uh, I do songs like like My Way, like Volare. Uh, I do oh, a lot nice. of these, the the the, the, the classics, the my classics. Way. My but but the, my point is simply this: Would the gorgeous Renee Michelle ever want to come and do a duet with me at one of our shows? I think I and dressed in a <laughs> gown, and we always dress to to the nines. Uh, do do a duet with me and the oh, legendary God. Carlos Carr. What do you say? Oh God, <laughs> you. I love how the way you're setting me up. Um, a, I have to know that song. I have to listen to that song to know it. And B, um, I think in America here, I think my go-to song is "I Will Survive" by Gloria Estefan. Oh yeah, I know that one. You know that's like my. Go-to I love song. that song. Or um, why don't you do right? You know. We can do it. We can play it that up for too. you. That too. But yeah. um, if when I was over in Japan, when I was staying there, living, you know, back and forth about like. About a year, you know, like I think like Chiguza Nagayo, she was very shocked to know that I could actually sing in Japanese and also read in Japanese as well. So, you know, there's like a Yumaha Masaki to Haido Takari to Gakdo to uh, Yoshiki. So, I, I'm more comfortable with their sing, you know, with their lyrics than so much of America. But over in America, I'm more of like oldies. Odie's type of music. Well, I feel like you're in luck because I am going to close out this episode after we have the Monte Pucciano. Yes. And I'm going to sing, I'm going to serenade you're gonna sing, you. You're going to serenade me. Oh. I'm going to serenade you with a classic. I'm not going to tell you what it is until we get to the end of the show, but I'm going to serenade you with a couple verses from a classic song. Oh, I would love that. I love like old classic music because I feel like the music back in the day had more of a meaning yes. than compared to the music now. Oh, yeah, hundred percent. I agree with you. Yeah, but can you yeah. sing a little bit? I will survive. Oh God! Just a touch. You can do it. Come on. At first, I was a wife. I was petrified. No, that's it. <laughs> well, we got we did get the voice. Verse get the there. voice. Beautiful voice. How is the prosecco? It's, it's, this it is was, prosecco. It was is fantastic. Afraid. No, I was petrified. There you go. <laughs> R- Renee, what do you think of this Prosecco? She didn't try yet. Mm. Oh, wait. Right. I was still on the first one. I was still on Genie on the Bottle. She's a Genie on the Bottle. No, she's a bit Venice. That's Venice. Yeah, with Christina Aguilera. Venice. You know, yeah. Genie on the Bottle. Gene, yeah. Yeah. You got to rub me the right way. Which one did you like better? Now you try the, the Prosecco. You like a genie in the bottle or bad? Ladies first. She didn't try yet. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Do you smell it? Do you smell it? I Is that what you do? You just you smell it? Yes. Do you smell anything? Can you smell it, please? Fruits. Are we talking yet? Great. Yep. Is it, is it green? I smell the perfume. It's <laughs> well, your wedding. It, what kind of perfume you're wearing? Perfume? Um, it's called Midnight. Midnight. Her wedding was, was viewed by millions, literally millions of people on national television as part of a Very WWE. sexy night, that's what it's yeah. called. Yeah. Very sexy night. You should let him know because he wasn't here for the first segment. Her, in all seriousness, her wedding was viewed by millions of people on uh, television and WWE. Yeah, so I usually wear, yeah, of course. Oh, so you can remember me. Wow. I can see. 
Let me see. Let me see. Give me another. Just spray a little. Just spray a little. That's it. I'm never going to forget about it. Aww. And then I like Very Sexy Nice. I also like Chanel number five. Of course. You know, that's what I wear, like, you know, when I go to bed at night, you know. Oh, you go to bed at night? Yeah, Chanel number five. I can't find the girl like you that wears Chanel number five. Where they make those? It's a classic. You cannot go wrong with Chanel number five. And then um, also <laughs> on top of that, there's Very Sexy from Victoria's Secret. There's mm -hmm. Very Sexy Night from Victoria's Secret. Um, there's also one brand called Good Girl. I like Good, Good Girl. Good Girl. And like how the perfume bottle is like a shape of a heel. I know which yeah. one is it. Yeah. I know. I love Good Girl. That's, a yeah. good, that's actually that's a, a good, good perfume. Yeah. So they either have the red heel or they have the black heel. I like both. So. What do you think about that? He likes Chanel nighttime. I love That's this. That's what it is. I love it. Yeah, oh, no, Chanel. Like Chanel yeah, I'm gonna tell you. In, in yeah, I'm gonna tell you something. I have one of the worst sense senses of my sense of vision when I look at this gorgeous woman. I have a great sense of vision, luckily, but my sense of smell is like one of the worst. Well, now you have uh, a sense. So yeah, I can smell this. You can tell very faint. Faint. From Chanel, I have uh, well, when I'm ch yeah, when I'm or I'm Florida telling, water, I have you one have the Florida water. Now, maybe, maybe, but I mean, <laughs> you don't remember. He does remember the difference no, between no, the bacala. I remember, I remember, I remember but do. I'm trying to I tell you, I do. Am, by like, bro, that's a yes, problem. yes, of course, of course. Yeah, bacala is bacala. Chanel yeah, is Chanel, Chanel. Is Chanel. Yeah. Come on. I would say like the the sense that I have is more like maybe mature. But it's also more like warm, mature, seductive type of sense. I love that. Seductive. You want to be like my wine, my, like my Prosecco but now. What I, like, yes. Th th those are more so my sense. Yeah. Now. But I just mean of the senses. I have a hard, I, I just have a weak sense of smell. Like oh, I really? Have, I don't smell things. Like, you know. Are you lucky like, man? Like, you know, I, I'm lucky in some cases. And so this is Good Girl. Oh, I like Good Girl. That's my favorite. This actually. is the red one. But they make it like it looks like a shoes, right? Like yeah. So this is the red one, the one wow. with the red heel. Wow. Get this can you, close to my can nose. Can you smell that? Oh yeah, I can that's smell my, that. This is my favorite. This yes. is my favorite. I can smell so they're the black one, and then this, this is the red one. The so, black one. I know the black one. Yeah. So this is the red one too. Can so you I tell your friend uh, that you're gonna introduce to me to wear the black one? Yeah, I could. I could do that. For this. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. But no, like, I, I guess I like more of a mature type of sense, you know, like, that's like very more so like nighttime, seductive, you know, um, warming. And then sometimes I mix it between like a little bit of woodsy or whatever, but then it, it really depends on my mood. If I want to be like something like light or whatever, then I'll go for something more of a lighter scent. You know, like a lot of people, they call it perfume or whatever. I like to call it scent. Mm -hmm. You know, if I want to go for scent. more like warm and seductive or whatever, I say scent again. No, I want to say warm and seductive. Like warm, you know, seductive, like homely, like you know, like yeah, like yeah, <laughs> he's smiling, you know, or like or maybe or, or maybe or maybe like a hint of like woodsy. And I'll yeah. go for that. And, I like them and tell him, speaking of Woodsy, let Massimo know you're a you are a woman of the you are a woman of the world, so well rounded. You're also an outdoors woman who loves horseback riding, archery. She's a, a master of archery. Yeah. She's so a, he came across one of my videos. She's a marksman. Yeah. Marksman. So I like using the recurve bow. Like I understand, like a lot of people, they use, like compound or whatever type of bow I like to go a little bit old school you know I like to rely solely on my side granted the recurve I mean granted the compound the compound bow is like more accuracy but I'm a little bit old school so I go towards the recurve bow but a lot of people don't realize back in the day they think that hunters like back in you know prehistoric mm. area were men they were actually women women yeah oh yeah oh. yeah and then huntress Yes, hunters. You know, a lot of people thought they were men. They were really women. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, during like England or whatever, they cut the fingers off the 
Aerosmith, you know, just to make sure that they don't be able to shoot accurately. Oh. So there's that saying, it's like, you know, like, you know, cutting fingers off. I forgot exactly what it is, but they cut their fingers off so that they don't be able to shoot accurately. Oh, God. And then for some of the women, they actually cut off their left breast so that they could be able to get it out the way. But if you shooting accurately, it's not supposed to be across the chest. It's supposed to be right here in that in this area so you have to be very careful when you do shoot a bow so that way you don't like either nick your chest yeah. or your breast we would never yeah. want you to do that wow. yeah yeah and you have to have like back muscle for it oh you yeah know? so and you I like to hunt i like to hunt but um i mean the only times that i have ever hunt was deer you know, and deer meat. Oh, is I love good. venison. Yes, love venison. I have yeah. great venison recipes. Can you make your um, I'll tell you, I, I make a venison chili that with mm -hmm. goat cheese. Now we're That's talking. Fantastic. Now we're talking. And the back strap, I love. I, 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 now let's let's talk about that. Uh, what what would you what would you make with venison? What are some of the? Because you're a great chef as well. Who me? Yes. Okay, so what with the dish again? I'm sorry. So with anything you would make with uh, venison. Venison? You're seriously the perfect woman. I have to say. Oh, no. Honestly, I don't, I'm not sure if I used that yet. When what? you deer hunted, you didn't use uh, venison? You don't cook it? No, I marinate it. Marinate, yeah. I yeah, 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 yeah. for like a few, a few days, and yeah. then I eat it. Oh, how you marinate it? Yeah. I how? Use it. Well, there's this great thing of... Um, you know, like either with soy sauce, or you can marinate it with like um, garlic and soy sauce and onions and stuff oh, like it that sounds for good, a few yeah. days. Then you can also marinate with um. There's this thing that's called uh, I forgot what it is, but it's gonna dawn on me probably later. Yeah. You know, even when you're cooking with chicken, it's like you marinate it for a few days. Um, yeah. I forgot what it is. It's like stuck at the top of my tongue, and it's like stuck in my mind, but I don't know the word for it. But yeah, if you like it, when anything that's game meat, like even turkey, like when I, uh, I used to and then turkey there's this hunt. Filipino, yeah. there's this Filipino vinegar. I forgot yeah. what it was, but it's like it's like a spicy vinegar that's really really good. It tastes yeah, really good. That's yeah. Like Filipino food that. comes like really really good. Filipino food is really you know what's really a good, good marinade? Looking at your your bracelet in my and my headband yeah. is uh, Italian dressing, especially. If you turkey hunt and the turkey, like the big wild turkey breast, you marinate that in uh, Italian dressing and then baste it as you grill it. And you also want to use like a marinade with like soy sauce, jalapenos, and lemon. Ooh, that sounds I good. Love jalapenos yeah. And jalapenos yeah. and lemon and soy sauce like mixed together, the good marinade. Let's do that. I think we would. Pair. Sometimes you gotta cook for us. Can you? Yeah. Yeah. She, of, course. of course she can. Are you kidding? She's like, a great If you chef. want Cuban food, I got you. If you want Filipino food, I got you. If you want some Italian Ooh, or Japanese that. or Korean, Japanese. vocal I want cheese. <laughs> She's I part Cubana. You. I want the Cuban. Like, Are you, you Cubana? A part Cuban, yeah. I love Cuba. I've been two times to Cuba. Oh, uh, yeah. I yeah. love Cuba. I still Cuba. have not been to Cuba, but I'm so, I was supposed to go to Cuba to get crowned for, like, my religion and mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. But I don't think that's happening because, of, like, the way of the world is. But, um, you know, I pretty much... And then if you want some British food, I got you. British? No, I want the Cuban food. Cuban food, ropa vieja, mandoros, yeah. yeah mandoros, yeah. and habla español? Poquito. Mi abuelo for Cuba. So Massimo, bueno, bueno, bueno. Massimo frequently goes to Cuba, but he also frequents uh, <laughs> Colombia. Uh, he's in Colombia all the time. I'm in love time. with the Colombia. It's the temperature. Medellin, Colombia is beautiful. Interesting. The, the temperature, the people, the food. Uh, it's so much to do. It's nice and uh, like calm. Like it's not yeah. crazy like it used to be. Yeah. So I really like it to go there for a weekend. I, I'm I, trying to go once a month. Yeah, I was only told about Cuba from my grandfather before he passed. Like how things are still the same. Like with the old school cars and all of that stuff. Oh yeah. Like I wish I could be able to um, grab one of those cars from back then. But can I say something? That's yeah. the only country actually. They still mm -hmm. like. They're still stuck in the old days. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's something unique, too. You got to think yeah. about it. I, I feel bad. I feel bad for one side because people, they, unfortunately, they don't know too much about it, mm -hmm. what's going on in the world. Because, But let me Cuban tell you. Cuban food is good, too. Thank you. 
Cuban food is fantastic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll cook some Cuban food for you guys. Who would you love like. it? Oh, my yeah. God. When, whenever, let me know. We are ready. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to take hours. Like, if you want some ropa vieja, like, either I can cook in a pot or I can cook in a crock pot. Whichever the, one expl- you want. Explain that dish uh, for the listeners, the ropa vieja. Ropa vieja? Yeah. So, it's like shredded. They call it old rags, you know, in translation. Mm-hmm. But it's like you have shredded flank and you let that keep cook and marinate you have like tomato pasta you have the tomatoes you have like all different types of seasoning oh, and stuff so when you cook it let's say for hypothetically speaking um you have to boil the meat and then after that you take the meat out and if you want to use a crock pot from there I like you that. have to use the crock pot mm-hmm. so then That's hours on it, it depending on how fast or how slow you want to cook it. It could take about four hours. It could take about eight hours. Oh, I love that. Can you we know? do two hours? Is like, no. No, it has no. to be four. Yes. I like it. Those, that sounds because amazing. Because you want all the four flavors, hours. and then you oh, want, like, the like olives and all of that all to, like, seek in mm-hmm. and the seasoning, you know, and all yeah. of that. Some people, they add raisins This guy can it. eat. He said he can eat oh, all day or yes. four. Oh, yes. All day, thing. he will yes. eat your food. Oh, really? Yes. That's good. Like, I like to use, like, a... Uh, a flank like this big, oh. this big, and then I put it into the crock pot. You know, after I got it boiled, and then I put it into crock pot, and then after that, I use like all the tomatoes and all of that stuff, and the and the olives and all oh, the tomatoes, yes. Yeah, yeah, like the um, the olives and the salsas and the seasoning. He loves and tomatoes everything. too. Yeah. Put a lot of them so, in. Tomatoes. Can you put extra tomatoes yeah. for him? Yeah, like yes. I, the better, the juicier. The better it is. We like juicier. Yeah. Like juicier? I love juicier. And then when you cook the black beans with the onions and everything, I like and then that. the garlic. That's Italian right there. Yeah. I think you're gonna be Italian. You got the yeah, meat. a little bit, a little bit in there. Well, you, you have, have to meat. remember. You let it all simmer and cook, and then you make uh, the rice. Oh. So what I like to how how I make the rice is like everyone uses like regular white rice. A roast. I like, Brown. I like to use like olive oil and butter and parsley and garlic and mix it all together and I classy the del arroz. Que classy del arroz. Is it white rice, the blanco? Or the it could be jasmine rice. Right, they're all the same. Yeah. It could be jasmine rice, right, it could be yeah. white rice, right, whatever. Or oh, brown because we're yeah. on the diet to get the brown. Yeah. It's still the yeah. same. A lot yeah. of people go like, a lot of people like go like, oh. In the rice. Oh, yeah. But the thing is with white rice. Right, mushroom? No, yeah, yeah. But the thing is between, <laughs> but between the white <laughs> rice and the brown <laughs> rice, oh, it's like a different rice. Give me some, give me some more. Oh, look, week, look at you. It's Monday. We got a drink. It's yeah. Monday. Yeah. Come on. It's Monday, guys. It's my guys. birthday party. So, Prosecco time. Prosecco time, yes. Yeah, I, I love that. Uh, well, my birthday is actually on Domingo and Sunday, ah, uh, and I'm going to be with her. Voy a ser con ella on my Salute. birthday. Uh, uh, we're going to be at a show in uh, the River City Wrestling Festival, Wrestling Con, in uh, Jacksonville. Oh, yes, right. we're going to be together. Yeah. Together? Yeah, Sunday. Are you going to come? Are you going to come to Jacksonville? Why not come? Why not come? But I understand you from here. Where are you going from here? Jacksonville, Florida. Jacksonville, Florida. And then after that? I got to go to Clearwater, Florida. And he's going to stay in Jacksonville. No, I'm going to go down uh, more around Daytona. You know. So you're going to stay together yeah. for a few days? No, it's just only I Sunday. Wish. Yeah, just a Sunday. Just Sunday. Ah, you, you gonna, but where do you live right now? Do you live I live, okay, so currently right now I live in Apopka, Florida. That's 30 minutes outside of Orlando. So to get to Jacksonville is about two hours. How you guys gonna meet over there? Uh, I drive, and uh, I guess I'm assuming he drives. Well, many so For me, drive? for where yeah. for where I am in Florida, that's Jacksonville's an hour and fifteen minutes. See, oh, so that's okay. closer to him. But me, I live like two hours away. So you're gonna go back to Orlando, close to Orlando. Right? Yeah, and then, and then drive to the Jacksonville. Game. I thought it was like a tour you guys doing together. Oh, no, 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 because oh. because we by are, the time this show airs, usually it takes almost a week. You yeah. might be past that already. Right. You know, so they're saying, you know, it's my birthday show, but my birthday technically ends not until this coming Sunday. Oh. Yeah, which uh, is which is the River City, City Wrestling, Wrestling Con. Con. Yes. Okay, okay. And Jacksonville. Now, now let me ask you, uh, Massimo, have you, do you ever watch wrestling? Are you a fan of the wrestling, the Lucha Libre? Lucha just, Libre. Just a little bit because I like more boxing. A boxeo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And some UFC? Yeah. Speaking uh, of UFC. boxing, yeah. here, here's a fun fact about me. She, you're a boxer too. You like to punch. No, I don't. Uh, it's not self She's a martial artist though. 
Not only that I was a martial artist, when I was living in Pensacola, Florida, growing up, it was very rough. So it was very taboo for, like, interracial couples and having, like, mixed children, you know, mixed children and everything. So I'm multiracial. So um, around the corner from my grandmother's place, there was, um, you know, Roy Jones Jr.? Oh, of course, yeah. His trainer lives around the corner from my grandmother's place. And I was training with him, knowing I did not know wow. that that was Roy Jones Jr. trainer during that time. And Roy Jones Jr. is a close friend of my father's. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah Roy Jones Jr. was, is, was, was one, of, was the one best, of the best. One of the very best. Yeah, Long time so ago. Because I was, like, multiracial and it was very taboo growing up um, as a multiracial child and, you know, my parents being in a biracial relationship. So talk about that a little bit, um, being multiracial, because you're so exquisitely beautiful. You're mixing everything together perfectly. Uh, what is, what is you mentioned the Cubana. What is your background? Because when I first met you, I thought you were Latina. So the thing is, like, okay, so I mix with, from what I was told, is Cuban, Native American, Italian, Black, Irish, Spanish, Cherokee, French, and German. Oh, my God. You That's know, everywhere. with the so Native so American means, side, it's yeah. the Native American with Cherokee, and us the two heat, you know, mm -hmm. on the Native side. Um, so my brother, on my father's side of the family, he was able to find family, because the majority of the men did the military. He was able to find family based back in the 17th, late 1700s, all the way in Sussex, England. Yeah. So we have a family crest and all of that, you know. On so my, your family, your family's been in America for a long time. Yes. Different generations, yes. right? Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then on my grandmother's father's side, her maiden name was Rothschild. So you know you could yeah. you could fathom how yeah, that comes about. Jewish, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so there's a Rothschild on my grandma. Um, grandmother's father's side and then there's the white family that's like German or English date back all the way in Sussex England uh, yeah. so um, I'm still in the process of finding out my mother's mother's side my mother's side of the family but that's as far as I could find out as far as my father's side of the family mm -hmm. from Rothschild and White and White is all the way date back in Sussex England so luckily because my brother was able to ask me who was my, who was our great, great grandfather? I was able to provide pictures and stuff with him, and you know, Dre Andre, he he's now getting into the government field, and I'm helping him in the process of getting his TSSCI clearance with the Department of Defense over at the CIA. Now let's talk about you worked for the CIA. Yes, I have. I was a government contractor for the CIA. You still work even now? <laughs> no, the, she worked I am, in the past. I am. She, I am. You, are you still with the CIA? Yes. Oh wow. But I no, that. but I do. I do more so on the recruiting hmm. firm. Oh wow. So my mother, she's the CEO of a contracting firm, and I'm the COO of the contracting firm. Before then, I was a business analyst as well as just an analyst for the Department of Defense over at the wow, CIA as a contractor. Wow, that's cool. Wow, you are such a fascinating woman. So way before I even got into wrestling, and even beforehand, I still do stuff as a You today. were with the CIA when you were approached by yes. Gilbert, yes. right? Yes. So this goes back like nine yes, years. I was a yeah, I was a contractor for them. Wow. Can wow. you show me a badge? I don't carry it around with me. <laughs> CIA oh, you have a covert. badge. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's cool. Wow. You are a woman of intrigue and mystery. Well... The thing is, like, either within my family is either you were military or government. Mm -hmm. So that's the realm of the lives that I grew up in. You know, like I said, I never grew up in wrestling or anything like that. How did and your family feel when you got into the wild and wacky world of professional wrestling? They were completely against it. Completely against it because it, it's not like they look at us beneath them or anything. It's mm -hmm. just that how the way they see it is, is like, what could they possibly offer compared to this sure. realm of the world? Sure. And which I totally understand it on both ends of the spectrum, but I feel more like 
like in longevity, I would say it will be that. But I feel more lively and and alive, and I love to travel and mm-hmm. meet interesting people along the way. Yeah, and it sounds like you're you're able to navigate both worlds. Yeah, now, which is I mean, yeah. it's a ama- you're an amazing woman in so many yeah. regards. Thank you. So uh, fortunately, um, fortunately or eventually, when my mother does retire, then I'll take over the business, and we will like to have a family owned business. So if I were to have children, and they so choose to, it will be passed on to them. That's great. You know, wow, my that's mother, interesting. My mother and I, we both, really, we both came from absolutely having nothing to struggling and surviving to now we be able to have what we have today. How did your mother get involved with the, with the CIA and with this company? Um, honestly, I don't know how she started, but she started making her own business doing recruiting. And then she started doing recruiting with government contracts, either is military or government.